My name is Yifei Yan, and I am a lecturer in public administration and public policy at the University of Southampton. As a scholar in comparative public policy and administration, my research broadly aims to understand how policies work or fail to work, especially in large developing countries. So by pursuing this research agenda, I hope that my research can generate practical lessons and insights to ultimately help make policies work and make policies work better. So just to give an example from the education sector, my forthcoming book, Getting Schools to Work Better, Education Accountability and Teacher Support in China and India, examines theoretically and empirically how we can get schools to work better. So the conventional and usual policy subscriptions in this regard either advocate for uh, market or social forces to hold schools and teachers accountable or expect the government command and control to do the same. So the argument that I put forward in the book is that empowering and supporting teachers and other frontline stakeholders is equally indispensable if we are to have a more holistic view about education accountability. And then by using a range of primary and secondary sources, I inquire empirically how such support to teachers is practiced and perceived in China and India, two of the largest basic education systems in the world. I think there are three key messages that I would especially like to highlight. The first is that support clearly matters, as I observed a significant difference between the level of satisfaction of those teachers who are covered and exposed to such uh, training and a career progression support versus those who were excluded. Having said that, the mere existence or installment of these supportive measures does not automatically guarantee that they are going to be effective in raising education outcomes. So in that sense, support also needs to be designed to work. And this realization distinguishes my research from this conventional wisdom that seems to suggest that there is a dichotomy between policy design and policy implementation. Because oftentimes, and especially in the developing world, we often hear that it is the implementation that needs to be blamed. Whereas policy design, on the other hand, is either left unscrutinized or assumed as if perfect. And the last message I want to emphasize is in terms of how precisely uh, design matters. So for, uh, for the work on teacher support, my research shows that in order for such support to be favorably received by uh, their very targets and recipients, it needs to be catering to the needs and also the incentives of the teachers on the one hand. And on the other hand, it also needs to serve to enhance their professional capacity. So overall, I think the uh, policy lessons generated from China and India, the two largest developing countries, could also be more relevant to other developing countries like facing similar challenges and uh, struggles because uh, well, compared with the uh, developed country context. So one example here is that what is often known and labeled as the high performing education systems are often located in the global now north, such as Canada or Finland. Uh, so the implication here is that if it is the high level of socioeconomic development and a relative abundance of their resources that has driven this high performance, then it means that there is essentially less room of uh, maneuver for the policy actions in the developing world, which are not endowed as much, uh, with as much uh, resources.
Right, so basically I think with this kind of research that I'm doing, I would envision uh, three main approaches to engage with, engaging with the uh, policy makers. The first is that, uh, well, of course, to like uh, make the research directly speaking to the policy makers. So in doing so, I would also be like, say, disseminating the key messages of my research, either in, uh, in the format of policy brief or or just uh, in the format of uh, uh, blog pieces and to just to reach a wider audience and raise the awareness. And the second point is that given the main research finding that uh, the policies needs to be co-designed to work in terms of catering to the recipients, so I would also want to uh, engage not only the policy makers, but also facilitate a dialogue between them and also the other key stakeholders, such as the, the teachers that is relevant to my research. So such a kind of like policy dialogue would ultimately help uh, better policy making as well. And lastly, given my uh, international and also the comparative focus, I would also want to create a similar uh, policy dialogue, not only confined to a specific country context, but also more internationally, because uh, a lot of the cha policy challenges in uh, today's world is actually transcending the boundaries in the sense that, uh, so for example, the imbalanced focus and emphasis on educational accountability, it's not only just the problem of the countries in the global south, but some many countries in global north are facing that as well. So in that case, by facilitating a policy dialogue at the international level, then it also kind of helps the uh, collab international collaboration in order to find a joint solution. So um, as a uh, early career researcher, so I am still on an ongoing learning journey in terms of the policy engagement and also the application of my uh, the policy impact from my research. So in that case, I am extremely grateful for all the support that I received from PPS already. And I think I would especially want to highlight two points. The first is that uh, PPS really kind of have helped uh, push me to think about what my research can provide for policymakers and in uh, for the purposes of policy uh, implications. So that means that I could take a step back from uh, like writing research papers and say thinking about all the theoretical and academic contributions, but mainly to disseminate and also like de demystify in a way my research in more plain and also jargon free words. So that lesson has actually stayed with me in a sense that like nowadays, so like whenever I have a new research publication out, I always aim to disseminate them either like by writing blog pieces and uh, commentaries in uh, major platforms such as the World Economic Forum or to deliver deliver this kind of messages through the uh, interview with uh, medias. So the second thing that I really appreciate uh, from the support of PPS is that as someone working on the non-Western uh, contexts, so the PPS also pushes me to think about the my research implications beyond my uh, original research contexts. So that makes a lot of sense because as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the uh, policy challenges and the so-called the wicked problems in today's world, they already transcended the national boundaries. So in that case, by uh, thinking comparatively and internationally about the research uh, about our research and also the policy implications, this also kind of helps like and draw synergies from the intellectual and material and the physical resources from all over the world in order to find a solution, uh, a collective solution to a lot of the problems and issues.
Right, so I think maybe I could offer some advice to uh, other early career researchers uh, who are like myself. So I think uh, two points are worth highlighting. The first is, uh, well, just uh, well, be resourceful, because I think in today's world, uh, in which we are exposed to not only the conventional or the traditional media, but there's also a lot of emergence of new media, such as uh, Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, etc. And also in the Chinese context, the WeChat, etc. So I think for us, it would be a very good opportunity to make a, a utilization of these different channels that could all help with the policy, uh, the, uh, the research dissemination, and also amplifying our policy messages. And secondly, I think it's also important for us to be communicative to the different kind of audiences, because the audiences for amplification of the policy messages to policymakers and other stakeholders there is quite different with the traditional audience that we face in the academia, right? The readers of our journal articles, etc. So that means we also need to devise different strategies in order for the same kind of research uh, findings to be heard. So that means, uh, like say, disseminating the research in more plain words, and also by utilizing the different kind of channels of media that I mentioned earlier.